I first met Shamim and uh, uh, Sashmita when they were to launch the book on Delhi. It took one minute for me to recognize the brilliance and genius contained in both of them. I love Delhi and that is why the books instantly leapt out to me. It took me a moment to look beyond the book at the two people who had produced the book. And I feel privileged that I know these two wonderful people who incidentally followed me in JNU, so in a way I'm their senior there. And, uh, <laughs> and, and it's with that right that I can dare to sit with my back towards both these people and still read their work because I think what, what the pictures that they've got and the writing that they've done are both equally powerful. I've had the privilege of reading at many wonderful places, but nothing has been as beautiful as the setting for today's reading. So I read it with my full heart and full, in, full involvement. And let me tell you, selecting the passages that I'm going to read was very difficult, because every time I would drift away into the photography, away from the text, so I had to show an immense discipline to identify the few segments of the text that I will do. I will take the liberty of reading from the first part of the book to begin with. Kailasha, which means crystal in Sanskrit, is the center of the world. Hindus believe that its four faces facing the four directions are made of crystal, ruby, gold, and lapis lazuli. The holy mount is also believed to be the center of the world mandala. It is located in the heart of six mountain ranges, symbolizing a lotus. Ever since the beginning of human civilization, Kailasha has always been seen in the context of one religion or the other. It is revered by four different faiths across the globe. For the Hindus, it is the abode of Shiva and the symbol of Om. Buddhists call it Kangrin Poche, the precious snow mountain. Jains revere it as Thir and believe that Sri Rishabdev attained his Nirvana there. Born texts have several names for this holy mountain. To them, it is the abode of the sky goddess Sipayana. Kailasha is also perceived as Sumeru Parvat by all. And so, since ages, it has been a great pull for people across all faiths. People come here from far-flung areas to catch a glimpse of it and to feel its air and aura. But when someone like me, Shamim is writing it, who doesn't formally belong to any of the faiths mentioned above, is drawn towards Kailash. Raised eyebrows aren't totally unexpected. Human societies are marked by the difference of faiths and not by the unity of them. For instance, Hindus retain exclusive rights over the four sacred thans in India and other ancient temples. Christians have exclusivity over Vatican City and the sacred churches, while Mohammedans enjoy exclusivity over Mecca. But unlike the temples or mosques, something as ethereal as Kailasa, which is hitherto untouched by human hands, or even the mind, should not be confused with the places of religious worship that the humans have created worldwide and want a sense of right over them. Because the question here is not whom does Kailasa belong to, but who belongs to Kailasa? It is, it is so, so stirring. I mean, it has been the most, I believe I'm not very fit to go to Kailasa, but I think that this is the closest, and frankly, this is good enough for me. I read another segment. The astral journey of the soul may not need any preparation, but the physical journey is not possible without preparation. Fortunately for me, I have been riding and trekking solo in Ladakh, so I was well aware of the hazards that come with high altitude. 
while I was setting things in order, my nine-year-old daughter Nishka, who's present here, asked me, what do we offer to Kailas and how do we pray them? Home or Havan, as propounded by the Vedic religion, is an important ritual that every Yatri is supposed to perform at the holy Mansarovar. It involves a puja of Lord Shiva, so many groups take a qualified pundit with them to help them in this ritual. As for me, I am neither born to understand the confines of the right religion, nor do I understand the right ritual. To me, a havan means an individual bowing down in front of the elements, fire, earth, air, water, ether, that have been there on and around the mother planet ever since it became the blue cherry. Besides, Kailash Mansarovar is the only place where there is no institution and hence no middleman between the temporal and the eternal. I think I will read just two more segments. Uh, this is the moment now, the exciting one, when he first witnesses Kailash. With day, uh, the date is Monday, July 6, 2009. With daybreak, we started our journey from Parya. I thought that I would make use of my camera once I see him. The drive was almost the same, but since we were not ascending, crossing the desert and a couple of tiny brackish water lakes, it was not very difficult. By noon, we were almost there. The Tibetan guide informed us that within a few minutes, the miracle will happen. All eyes were fixed on the horizon and there was absolutely no sign of the holy peak. Suddenly, the jeep started climbing a small hillock and at the top of it, we could see prayer flags. The driver did a quick clockwork parikrama and stopped. From the jeep window itself, we saw the holy mountain as if it emerged out of nowhere. Everyone sank into an instant trance as the panoramic view of Holy Kailash and Mansarovar left us speechless. It was a very clear day and the mountain was right in front of us in all its divine glory. The feeling it invoked cannot be expressed in words. It had a hypnotic effect, as if it was a dream. For a moment I thought of pinching myself awake. Bizarre thoughts started hammering down. If the entire world is nothing but Maya, and our senses perceive everything in order to maintain the harmony, then what does this darshan of Holy Kailas Mansarovar mean? Is this enigmatic view also, Maya, who created this Maya? Hari, who can be called by any name, and also as Lord Vishnu or Krishna. He was born in the mythological Shiv Sagar, which in reality is the present Mansarovar. So if ever, so if even Hari was born here by the will of Shiva, whose abode is Kailasha, then this particular portion of the mother planet must be free of Maya. When I approached the lake, I remembered a legend. It is believed that if you drink from the Mansarovar, you will be blessed by Shiva. But if you take a dip, you will be blessed by Lord Vishnu and thus be free from all sins of this and past lives. So at the lake, I had a choice to make. Drinking from the holy lake came naturally to me. I was thirsty for him ever since. After drinking from him, the dip was a must since we were there. Even a mere touch of the icy cold water rattles one's nerves. It is sheer devotion which goads one to take a dip. Unbelievable but true. The moment one emerges out after the drip, one expects to freeze. On the contrary, one felt warm. 
It was as if a warm wind caressed your body and you regret rushing out of the lake in a hurry. All the bodily pain vanished and I felt like a newborn, still standing in the holy lake, looking at the holy Kailash, cemented my personal faith that there must not be any middleman between God and me. I felt in my entire body and soul that I was exactly at the place where the temporal and the eternal become one unit, at least for a moment. And I would like to end, although uh, there has been reference to birds and I uh, am a bird watcher, so I would have loved to read, but I know that it's getting colder, so I would like to end by saying that there is something very special about these two people who unfortunately are sitting behind me and I am sitting with my back towards them. It has been rankling me since I've sat here. And that is that this is not a one-time journey, it is a continuous journey. They have internalized this whole journey within them. And so the last words in the book I'm going to read to you. The ignorant me has no idea how to please God. But I would like to do my best towards the mother planet. To show that I also want to minimize the damage being caused to her due to my existence. I pray to the mother to give me strength and wisdom to live up to her expectations. I may not be able to stop the trees from being cut, but I can always plant a few more. I may not be able to heal an ailing animal, but I can try to feel his pain. I may not have enough blankets to distribute to the homeless sleeping on the pavements of Delhi's, in Delhi's winters, but I can always share a night with them to feel their suffering. Ladies and gentlemen, Shamim Akhtar and Sasmata Kailasha, a journey with them.